Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today's topic of discussion will be cytoskeleton. So let's start. By the end of this presentation, we will be able to define cytoskeleton. We can then identify the basic components of cytoskeleton. We can then reflect the histological and biochemical structures of the components of the cytoskeleton. And at the end, we can give the functions of the components of cytoskeleton. Now, in the human body, we have the bones and cartilages as our supporting framework. So, some indi the individual cells also need the supporting framework in the form of proteins. So, the proteinaceous supporting framework of a cell is called as the cytoskeleton. Uh, the cytoskeleton is the skeleton of an individual cell as the name indicates. The cytoskeleton helps in uh, maintaining the cell shape, stabilization of cell junctions, the intracellular transport that is a transport within the cell and the movement of the particular region of the cell or of the entire cell. Okay? The cytoskeleton helps in maintaining the cell shape, stabilizing the cell junctions, the intracellular transport as well as the transport of an entire cell. Now there are the three basic components of cytoskeleton. These are the microfilaments, the intermediate filaments and the microtubules. Okay? The microfilaments are the thinnest, the intermediate filaments are the intermediate as the name indicates and the microtubules are the thickest of these three components of cytoskeleton. Now we will discuss them one by one. Microfilaments. Microfilaments, as I have indicated before, that they are they are the thin filaments. They range five to seven nanometers in diameter. They are solely comprised of the actin protein. Uh, actin is in the two forms in eukaryotic cytoplasm, which is the glo globular actin or the G actin and the filamentous actin or the F actin. Okay? The actin is the main component of the microfilaments. It is in two forms in the human cytoplasm. That is the globular actin and the filamentous actin. The filamentous actin is in the form of a rope or what we can say it is in the form of a double stranded helix. Now for the structure of microfilaments as I have discussed that the G, uh, that the, there are two types of actin in the human cytoplasm that is the G actin and the F actin. The G actin is the monomer and the F actin is the polymer. So G actin is polymerized to form F actin. Now this polymerization requires some special uh, molecules and ions for stability. So these ions are the calcium ions, magnesium ions, potassium ions and the ad adenosine triphosphate that is the ATP for energy purposes. Actin fulfills its functional roles by associating with some proteins which are known as the actin binding proteins. Okay? Some of these proteins are myosin which is the most common one, alpha actinin, valin, fascin, fimbrin, gelsolin, spectrin which is present in the red blood cells and adductin etc etc. Actin is structurally stable in the muscle cells and it is unstable in the non-muscular cell. Now what does this mean? This means that in the muscle cells, we have to uh, generate the contractile forces. So the actin should be stable in the muscle cell so that they, the muscle can contract every time and any time. And the non-muscular cell which does not con which does not contract, which do not contract. So these cells doesn't do, do not need to have uh, the actin in the stable form always. So actin is unstable in these cells. Okay. Now we can look in this uh, illustration that the actin filament is made up of the polymerization of G actin monomers into a then F actin polymer and this polymers, these polymers then uh, associate with some proteins to form parallel filaments okay? and then they can serve as their functions, functional roles. Now the functions of microfilaments. They have the role, their role in the amoeboid transport that is the uh, here is the pseudopodium and the actin is uh, uh, arranged in it and then the cell moves they have role in the bulk transport that is the endocytosis and exocytosis uh, it is done uh, through uh, the 
approaching our molecules to the cell surface. So the so area of the cell immediately beneath the cell membrane is called the cell cortex okay the area of the cell immediately beneath the cell membrane is called the cell cortex so uh, the cell cortex is rich in uh, actin filaments so the actin uh, approaches them so uh, the receptors actin and clathrin then the apet is formed then actin and myosin uh, work together to pinch this vesicle off and this vesicle is endocytosed so actin has a major role in bulk transport actin also helps in the muscular contraction uh, we can see in this the sarcomere the contractile unit of a muscular cell so here uh, are the myosin filaments forming the A band, H zone and M line and here is the actin filament forming the I band okay? Now, the actin uh, is uh, slided up by the myosin uh, bulbous heads, the cross bridges, and the muscle is then contracted. So, actin has a major role in muscular contraction. Actin also forms the structural core of microvilli. Now, it is the microvillus. Uh, this microvillus has a structural core made up of actin. Microvilli help in the absorptive, uh, absorptive functions of the cell. Uh, actin also uh, anchors the cell membrane proteins. Uh, here is an illustrative picture of the an RBC membrane. Uh, here are, is the spectin which I have said is present in the RBC and here is an actin. Here is the membrane protein, the two membrane proteins. So the actin is anchoring these membrane proteins. Actin also helps in the formation of clavish furrow. Uh, when the nucleus divides, then the cytoplasm divides. Though for the cytokinesis, there is a cleavage furrow made in the animal cells. So the intermediate fil filament, that is the actin filaments, help in the formation of cleavage furrow. But the microfilaments help in the formation of cleavage furrow. Uh, 